Uh, hi, this is still Marshall Cornblatt, and uh, I'm at the very first purchase we made after I bought a house. We didn't have a kitchen set yet, but <laughs> Lillian let me buy grand pianos for some ungodly reason, and I've had it ever since. Uh, interesting story, I'll tell you. When uh, my wife was an interior designer, she used to design wallpaper uh, for the Imperial Wallpaper Company. And when we downsized into this house, she told me that grand piano is not going on the first floor. She said, I have plans for the first floor. It's a smaller house. You have to find another place to put it. So I called the mover, who was a good friend of mine. It was Matheson Trucking. They moved, they moved pianos for Carnegie Hall. And so I told them what my wife said. I said, you have to put this piano down the basement. And so he sent two of his best guys, and he told them, he had been an old friend of mine, and uh, he told them, do not come back and tell me that piano did not go down the basement. They ripped the staircase out. <laughs> they took the, 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 the piece of drywall out. They got it down by a quarter of an inch. Wait. I'm coming back with whatever I'm going to get. So give me a minute. I'm coming. Don't leave. It'll be worth it, I promise. I have rolls of carpet. Because when they get it out of here, it's only going the way it came in. And so this is more of the carpet that's on the floor because they're going to have to rip that staircase out and recarpet it. So I bought the carpet because so, <laughs> that's the only way the piano's coming out. And I didn't want it to fade. And I didn't know if they'd be making the same stuff. So <laughs> that's how the piano came downstairs. Wow. Write so, a song about that. <laughs> yeah, how the piano came? Yeah. It, was, it was great, though. Um, anyway, Johnny Mandel was a composer who wrote a lot of stuff for movies and uh, Broadway. And he offered, he was asked to write something for a movie that ultimately was called The Courtship of Emily. And um, he offered them two songs. The first one was the one that, that ultimately became the, the uh, theme of the movie. It was called Emily. But the other one, you think they made the right choice, but the other tune they offered them was this. And that, a shadow of your smile. So they couldn't have made a bad choice. Right. I mean, it might have been retitled Emily in the shadow of Emily's smile or something. But uh, those are the two songs he offered them. This is the other one. That ultimately was the theme of the movie.
Thank you. So, Pat, we haven't arranged anything, right? Pick a tune, pick a key. People. F. Okay. An F, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I used to tell people, first time I played with Lee Vincent, I was still pretty full of myself. And he said, where's your fake book? I went, <laughs> and he said, we'll see. And after that, we were close friends. Uh, and I used to tell people, I don't know what the original key is. Musicians will always say to you, we're going to do it in the original. I said, just tell me what key it is, please. <laughs> because I played for so many singers. I didn't know what the original key was. Uh, I play any tune in any key. If I can hum it, I can play it. And uh, that's How about something for your grandkids. Something you'd like to play for them. Well, okay. Um, it's called "When I Fall in Love." There you go. And uh, I love them both. My one granddaughter graduated from George Washington University, and she's, a, she's in the medical industry. She's in a, a Bachelor of Science in Nursing and a Bachelor in Public Health. My grandson is studying to be a commercial airlines pilot. He's going to Embry-Riddle in, in, uh, just outside Scottsdale in Prescott, Arizona. And um, he's going to graduate after four years with a commercial pilot's license. So. Um, this is for both of them.
Really great kids. <laughs> Do you have any final last words for this uh, this episode? Because I think we'll probably be coming back and do another one. Only one thing, and that's what really the book says. Everybody you ever meet in your life, every person, I don't care, beggar, millionaire, chief Indian, boss, surrogate, every person you ever meet in your life has something of value to teach you. It is your obligation and your privilege to find out what that is and learn from it. How about one more goodbye song? Well, not goodbye forever. <laughs> to, the, to the next chapter.